Hello everyone. I have had a request from several of my subscribers saying that I'm going too fast in my unboxings and unwrappings. What? Me? An old woman going too fast? I don't know. They would like me to go a bit more slowly and show all the unwrapping, but uh, I won't show you me trying to wrestle with the cellophane all the time because it takes me far too long to get it off because of my hands. As you can see that left hand is getting slowly worse. I can't, I can't stretch it, the fingers properly anymore. It's, it's sort of stuck like this. I can curl the hand around the controller and around the Vita and other consoles quite nicely. As long as I can hold a controller, I'm in business. Uh, so to start with, I have uh, two games which are already unwrapped. They arrived uh, such a long time ago and I wasn't able to incorporate them in a video. So I had a look at them uh, already, but I haven't shown them to you yet. The first one is called Wattam and this is the back cover now because I've already had this open and played it a little bit I should be able to get a little clip ready from my recordings and I'll just um, pop it in at a convenient moment so you get just a quick view of the game Wattam was developed by a company called Fanomina. Now that didn't ring any bells with me, but it was designed by Keita Takahashi, who's of course better known uh, for the Katamari Damacy series. Uh, now this game was released uh, for PlayStation and Windows in December 2019. And I finally caught up with it, managing to get a physical copy. It's not that easy anymore. But of course, I had to go for the sushi cover. Sushi being my all-time favorite food. Keita Takahashi said that he was always trying to make a game that makes people notice how, quote, our ordinary life is great. And I thought that was rather nice. And the game accordingly is very suitable, I would say, for very young players. You can do co-op in the game, so parents could play with their children. And while the game is not difficult, at least not in the beginning, it isn't totally obvious. There is no hand-holding or anything. Uh, you basically navigate around this uh, strange and rather cute world uh, trying to figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. And that's, of course, the fun of it. I just saw the age rating and it says aged 10 plus. And I'm quite surprised. I would have thought in Europe they probably would have age rated at maybe seven. I would say children a bit younger than 10 could also play it, but I guess you would get more out of it if you're already slightly older and can cope with some of the more difficult puzzle elements. So uh, what is the story of Wattam? Uh, Maya is alone in a dark world with no memories, too sad to realise his dear friends are still nearby. However, an unexpected reunion helps him remember the joy in simply grabbing a friend by the hand and running off to adventure together. Join Maya as he reunites with new and old friends and discover the forgotten joy of their world. Take control of a cast of characters by yourself or with a friend. Transform into fruits and poops. 
climb to new heights, laugh, cry, tumble and soar beyond the differences of words and thoughts to bring everyone together, learn to have fun again. And that really is a very good description of the game. Hopefully the little clip I'll be putting up will show you the colourful world with very simple shapes used for the different um, characters. It's very inventive. And, and here we are in the wacky but charming world of Wattam. Now this footage is over two years old and I'm looking at it thinking what the heck is going on? What did I do? I don't remember too much, so you'll have to bear with me. As you can see, there's a lot of greeting and just socializing to do. But in fact, if you look at the, um, the settings and the controller options, there are uh, quite a few possibilities of interacting and doing stuff. Now, I need to point out straight away that the two slightly wonky aspects of the game on the PS4 is the camera. It's not too bad, but it's not perfect by any means. And the other one is using the controls for highlighting and then interacting with um, another item or character. You can jump very easily from character to character, but um, it takes a bit of practice being able to do it smoothly. The green character with the black magic hat is Mare, your main character. Now, one of the great achievements in the game is the kaboom. Uh, you've already seen it happen once or twice. Uh, as you can see, they're all clamoring for kabooms, and the more you do, the better, basically. <laughs> What is this appearing out of the sky? A flying toilet. Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome back, toilet. Everybody is delighted to see it. Now, can you imagine how much little children would absolutely adore this. Here we go. First thing to go down the toilet, the telephone. And it's very much a trial and error kind of game. You just try things and see what happens. And in this case, we get golden poops. Top right hand corner, you see uh, the game usually indicates what you're meant to be doing or achieving, and clearly the game wants lots of poops. I had a right old time uh, working away at this, and those golden poops want a kaboom. The game can be a bit cryptic in figuring out what needs to be done uh, to achieve the outcomes so that you can then progress on to the next uh, level. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if children would be much better at that uh, than an adult like me. You can see exactly the results of what you achieved at the end of each level. And here I managed to trigger another uh, mini world or new characters. I have no idea how. <laughs> Welcome back, bowling. We are introduced um, top right to the new um, characters, bowling pin, crown and a ring. And the main task is, can you stack as tall as me? Now that may sound quite straightforward, but I did not find it to be so. 
the whole uh, moving and stacking objects uh, procedure would clearly be a lot easier on PC with point and click. I thought I'd done quite well in the stacking department and getting Mayor right on top there. I thought surely that must be enough and a kaboom, but apparently not. If you don't succeed at first, you try again, and this is what Wattam is all about. As I said, I mean, I, I'm having fun with it on my own, uh, but it's not a game I would sit down and play, like, for hours on end, you know, not like an RPG. Uh, but I would say it's ideal for children, for younger players. So that's Wattam. A very nice addition to my PS4 library. So the other game which I had already uh, unwrapped and started playing is Shadowgate. And it's not much point showing you the reverse side because it's very dark and it's kind of hard to read the text on it really. This game was published physically by a limited run. It's number 333 in their uh, library and this is this is a really interesting game with quite a big history and you know how I love my history. Shadowgate is a black and white point and click adventure game going back to 1987. Yes, originally for the Apple Macintosh. Now, I don't know whether many of you remember the, the original Apple Macintosh, but I remember Poodle Pa coming home one day in the 1980s and saying he'd been given this computer at work and they told him he could take it home to familiarize himself. And it wasn't very big. Uh, it was a sort of all-in-one thingy, but it was incredibly heavy. And we put it on a desk at home and we sort of walked around it, peering at it from all sides. Finally, we looked at each other and said, how on earth do you switch the thing on? We had no idea. There was no obvious button or anything to press. You know, you look for a big power button. Poodle Pie had to ring up as someone in the IT department at work and he explained that the power switch on button was hidden right at the back, a bit recessed. You had to sort of feel around for it and that's how you switched it on and off. Maybe deliberately so people didn't accidentally switch it on and off. In those days I'm sure that meant all data were lost. Uh, anyway, that was the first time we ever encountered uh, an Apple Macintosh, one of the very early personal computers. So then the game is named for its setting, Castle Shadowgate, which is the residence of the evil warlock lord. Oh yeah. A colour version of the game was released for the Amiga and Atari, and in 1989 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I guess it's possible some of you may remember the game from that platform, the early NES. The game is notorious for its many opportunities for death. I like how they phrase that, you have an opportunity for death. That sounds very inviting like being burned by a dragon's breath, attacked by a cyclops, sucked into outer space through a broken mirror, dissolved by acidic slime, mauled by a wolf woman, or eaten by sharks. A nice variety. Virtually any action taken by the player which is not the correct puzzle solution will result in a fatality. Well, that's just Great, especially for someone like me who's not very good at puzzles. You shall die. These deaths were often graphically described in the game's text, along with sardonic and humorous comments, even in the NES version, in spite of Nintendo's policy of censorship at the time. So how did this game get onto a modern console? 
Well, the developer Abstraction Games announced exactly two years ago that they were releasing a remake of the old Shadowgate for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch. This is apparently an updated version of the one that was first released for PC back in 2014. And it sounds like the remake started out as a Kickstarter. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I thought it might be so old-fashioned that even I might balk at it and lots and lots of text and whatnot. Well, I had the surprise of my life when I popped it into my PlayStation 4 and just started it up. It looks amazing. The graphics are really great. There is a tutorial in the beginning guiding you through the early steps. You can still make mistakes, of course, but, uh, you know, there's basic guidance there. And I started playing. I didn't know how to stop. You know, two hours later, I sat there and I thought, where has the time gone? I want to play more. It's that kind of game. OK, it is old fashioned still, obviously, in design. I was worried about the controls, you see, that they might be really clunky, especially coming basically from a PC background. But they've mapped the controls really, really well to the PS4. I had no issues whatsoever and everything seemed to be quite intuitive and very quick to learn the controls. So I'm now a big fan of Shadowgate. And I will uh, pop a little video clip, what I recorded from the early parts of the game. I will uh, pop that up there for your viewing pleasure. But this is a big thumbs up from me. I don't care what the critics say. I loved it from the moment I booted it up. A great quest. Hmm, certainly it shall be these things. But for you, young Jair Kathaker, soldier of Windermere, could it not be so much more? I eat south from Rivelin, around the southern arm, through the Waven Fairwood, past Myrithsath. Beyond the citadel of Murlac Tor, and the spires of Gimdane, and the darkness of Tarketh's Pass. There you shall find my stone in wait. Under the shade of the mountain range, none have entered, either on foot, on mount, on wing. Gatekeeper, the oldest of spires. It harbors that which has been spoken of in whispers and ascribed to legend. Shadowgate, the living castle. It is there that you will find me, Blackmere of the Circle of Twelve. It is there that you will find this great quest. It is there that you will find yourself. Very Dungeons and Dragons. With a roar, the ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. He was a fool to send a child to do that which even the vaunted Circle of Twelve could not. Contain my growing power. Come if you wish. It makes little difference. Seal your fate within this living castle of the dead. You crawl your way through underground tunnels and openings. Uh, this one is uh, very early on. And you can see here the all-important ring menu that gives you access to a whole range of commands. The ring comes in layers, so it takes just a while to get used to flipping in and out of the um, various command levels. As I said before, I think it's a really well-designed and well-implemented for a console use. 
Uh, here is the general menu available at almost any point. And our task here is to open that door. Can we complete this difficult task by using the wheel? Yes, we can. With stone tombs lining the walls of this musty crypt, there's an ancient, almost reverent air to this place. What now? This is not a fast game. You need to consider the task and the tools you have very carefully at every step. The thyself command is a tricky one. It obviously stems from an earlier historical period of gaming. It took me a while to really figure out how to use it correctly. You yank on the torch, pulling it downwards. You hear a mechanism release and then a rumbling beneath you. You jump back as the tomb in the centre of the room slowly moves across the floor, revealing a stairway leading down. Now comes the moment where Shadowgate shows its real teeth. I'm opening that tomb. When you open the tomb, a horrific creature is released, letting out a piercing cry that cuts into your very being. It's a banshee, harbinger of death and disease. The game does assist you with information about time running out and playing with fire. It's well worth reading these instructions very carefully. Of course, I like living dangerously and proceed to open the uh, very first tomb. And I have a lucky break. My vision clears and the episode passes. Whoa, that was intense. So here I'm using fire from the torch on the mummy and the ancient wrappings quickly go up in flames. A mask falls to the ground. You shudder, imagining yourself locked inside a stone tomb like this for any length of time. There is a sack with some loot inside. Of course, I'm overjoyed and pick up the few pieces, which will no doubt come in very handy. I'm back in the hallway, and this is now where a map comes in really handy. And as you can see, this is a really nice map showing exactly how all the small grottos and chambers in this dungeon are connected. A damp, musty breeze wafts out from behind an altar set within the stone alcove. You note that the long hallway continues further into the mountain. When you open the book, you feel something shift in the floor. I keep thinking about those flaming eyes. I mean, what exactly are we dealing with here? The animated skull asks. Here is an ornate stone archway replete with carved skulls. We need to get in somehow, and this is where our animated skull, Yorick, who's basically our sidekick, uh, comes in and helps us gain entrance. A cold mist swirls about your feet, casting a surreal pall over the stone-arched antechamber. Concentrating on the glowing runes, you gain a sense of benign power. This section of the castle is surely powered up. This room reminds you of the elven funhouse at King Otto's fair. You remember taking your sister, hoping to lose her in the reflective maze. Finding a handhold, you attempt to lift the rock. You feel something move, but unfortunately it's in your back. However, we manage to get through to somewhere. Peering into the darkness, you drop down in the muck and crawl through the tight opening. This stone den is damp and smells of copse and green foliage. As if a mirage, the far side of the cave shimmers and power emanates from a standing stone obelisk. Ooh! Creepy, gruselig. 
The stone obelisk is nearly ten hands high, embellished with strange glyphs and three deep notches. It hums with an ancient power that assures you it can be powered by a simple, magical invocation. You focus your will on the stone obelisk. With a whispered word, your spell is unleashed. A strange apparition coalesces from within the obelisk, the ghostly figure of an old man cloaked in a shimmering veil. You have done well, simple soldier. Now, listen if you have ears, since the shadows grow long and time fleet. Some forty years past, an evil, the likes the world has not beheld, escaped its prison. Talimar, the Black, he of whom I have already spoken. This warlock lord brought forth his dark magics and conjurations and unleashed his foul vassals, desecrating these sacred halls. Talimar has laid waste to the combined power of man. And what of the Circle of Twelve? The great wizards, they are no more. I am the last. Be not, boy. We were resolute in our judgment, but erred greatly. Could have been better to put our brother to death, but mercy and folly prevailed. I know not Talimar's full plans, but have discovered enough to fill my heart with fear. And yet, hope remains, and it stands or falters with you. Fare thee well. Luckmere the Timeless vanishes, leaving behind a scroll, a glowing orb, and the words. And we leave our intrepid dungeon explorer here by the obelisk, contemplating what needs to be done next. I hope you enjoyed your time at Shadowgate, the living castle. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.